Welcome to our countdown of the top 10 simplest impossible problems in the world. These are the puzzles and paradoxes that seem easy at first glance but have stumped the greatest minds for centuries. They are deceptively simple. You look at them and think, oh, I could solve that if I had a few free hours. But these problems are like cosmic quicksand. The deeper you dive in, the more you realize just how much you don't know. We're talking about the kind of problems that make you question the nature of mathematics, the fabric of reality, and the limits of human understanding. These are the enigmas that keep mathematicians up at night, scribbling away on chalkboards, their hair turning whiter with every failed attempt at a solution. They're the Mount Everests of the mathematical world, daring us to reach their summits even as they mock our every effort. So buckle up, fellow knowledge seekers, as we embark on a journey into the minds of geniuses and the mysteries of the universe, exploring the top ten simplest impossible problems that continue to baffle and inspire us. Let's start with a problem so simple a child could understand it. Take any whole number. If it's even, divide it by two. If it's odd, multiply it by three and add one. Keep repeating those steps. The Collatz conjecture states that no matter what number you start with, you'll always eventually end up at the number one. Sounds simple, right? Almost too simple. Mathematicians have tested this conjecture with countless numbers, and it always seems to hold true. But here's the catch. No one has been able to prove that it works for every single number. Think of it like a mathematical hailstorm. You release a hailstone into the storm and it gets tossed around by the wind, sometimes going up, sometimes going down. But no matter how chaotic its journey, it eventually falls to the ground. The Collatz conjecture is like saying that every hailstone, no matter how high it flies, will always eventually hit the ground. We've seen it happen countless times, but proving it for every possible hailstone, well, that's where things get interesting. It's a testament to the fact that even in the world of numbers, there are still uncharted territories, mysteries waiting to be unraveled. Now let's talk about prime numbers, those building blocks of the mathematical universe. They're like the atoms of mathematics, indivisible and full of mystery. The Riemann hypothesis deals with the distribution of these prime numbers, their hidden patterns and arrangements. Imagine a vast cosmic ocean with each prime number represented by a distant star. The Riemann hypothesis is like a map, a cosmic guide to the location of these prime number stars. Mathematicians have been using this map for over a century and it's led to countless breakthroughs in fields like cryptography and computer science. But here's the rub. We still don't know for sure if the map is completely accurate. The Riemann hypothesis claims that there's a hidden order, a secret symphony governing the distribution of these prime numbers. It's like saying that the stars in our cosmic ocean aren't scattered randomly, but are arranged according to some grand cosmic design. Proving this hypothesis would be like finding the composer of the universe's symphony, unlocking a deeper level of understanding about the fundamental nature of mathematics and reality itself. Uh, imagine you're planning a road trip across the country. You want to find the shortest possible route that visits every state capital. That's a tough problem, right? It would take a lot of calculations to find the absolute shortest route. Now imagine you have a friend who claims they found the shortest route. It would be much easier to check if they're right by simply following their route and measuring the distance. That's the essence of the P versus NP problem. P problems are those that are relatively easy to solve, like checking your friend's road trip route. NP problems are those that are easy to check, but might be incredibly difficult to solve in the first place, like finding the shortest route yourself. The P versus NP problem asks whether every problem whose solution can be quickly verified can also be solved quickly. In other words, is easy to check always the same as easy to solve? This problem has huge implications for everything from cryptography to artificial intelligence. Solving it would be like finding a shortcut through the computational jungle, a way to unlock solutions to some of the world's most challenging problems. Chapter 4. The Twin Prime Conjecture Let's return to the realm of prime numbers for a moment. Twin primes are pairs of prime numbers that are only two apart, like 11 and 13, or 29 and 31. They're like celestial twins orbiting each other in the vast expanse of the number line. The twin prime conjecture states that there are 
infinitely many twin prime pairs that these celestial twins continue to appear forever as we journey down the number line. It's a simple, elegant conjecture, but proving it has stumped mathematicians for centuries. Imagine you're exploring an infinite forest, and every now and then you come across two trees growing side by side, their branches intertwined. The twin prime conjecture is like saying that no matter how far you venture into this forest, you'll always keep finding these twin trees. Proving this conjecture would be like discovering a hidden law of nature that governs the growth of these mathematical trees, revealing a deeper order within the seemingly random distribution of prime numbers. Chapter 5, The Continuum Hypothesis. Hold on tight because we're about to dive into the mind-bending world of infinity. You see, not all infinities are created equal. There's the infinity of counting numbers, the infinity of points on a line, and even an infinity of infinities. The Continuum Hypothesis deals with the question of whether there's an infinity that sits between the infinity of counting numbers and the infinity of points on a line. It's like asking if there's a size of infinity that's bigger than a bread box, but smaller than the entire universe. This hypothesis has profound implications for our understanding of the very fabric of mathematics. It's like trying to measure the space between atoms to quantify the infinitely small and the infinitely large. The continuum hypothesis has puzzled mathematicians for over a century, leading to heated debates and groundbreaking discoveries in set theory. It's a reminder that even in the realm of the infinite, there are still mysteries to be explored, boundaries to be pushed, and knowledge to be gained. Chapter 6. The Navier-Stokes Existence and Smoothness From the realm of pure mathematics, we turn now to the world of physics and the enigmatic Navier-Stokes equations. These equations describe the motion of fluids, from the air we breathe to the blood flowing through our veins. They're the mathematical backbone of everything from weather forecasting to airplane design. But here's the catch. While we can write down these equations, we don't fully understand them. The Navier-Stokes existence and smoothness problem asks whether solutions to these equations always exist, and if so, whether they're always smooth and well-behaved. Imagine a river flowing down a mountain. The Navier-Stokes equations are like trying to predict every ripple, every eddy, every twist and turn of that river's flow with perfect accuracy. Solving this problem would be like unlocking the secrets of fluid dynamics, giving us a deeper understanding of everything from the formation of hurricanes to the flow of blood in our arteries. Chapter 7. The Birch and swinnerton dyer Conjecture. Let's return to the world of number theory for a moment and delve into the Birch and swinnerton dyer Conjecture. This conjecture deals with elliptic curves, which are mathematical objects that look like the surface of a donut. Now, you might be wondering what donuts have to do with number theory. Well, it turns out that elliptic curves have a surprising connection to the solutions of certain equations. The Birch and Swinnerton dyer conjecture provides a way to predict the number of solutions to these equations based on the properties of the corresponding elliptic curve. It's like saying that by studying the shape and size of a donut, we can predict how many sprinkles will fit on its surface. This conjecture has far-reaching implications for our understanding of number theory and its connections to other areas of mathematics. It's a reminder that even the most seemingly abstract mathematical concepts can have surprising and unexpected connections to the real world. Chapter 8. The Hodge Conjecture Hold on tight because we're about to enter the abstract realm of algebraic geometry. The Hodge Conjecture deals with the shapes and structures of complex mathematical objects. Imagine trying to build a sculpture using only building blocks of different shapes and sizes. The Hodge Conjecture is like asking whether we can always build a given sculpture using only a specific set of building blocks. This conjecture has profound implications for our understanding of the fundamental building blocks of geometry. It's like trying to understand the language of shapes, to decipher the code that governs the structure of the mathematical universe. The Hodge conjecture has challenged mathematicians for decades, leading to the development of new tools and techniques in algebraic geometry. It's a reminder that even in the most abstract realms of mathematics, there are still mysteries to be unraveled, puzzles to be solved, and knowledge to be gained. E Chapter 9. The Yang-Mills Existence and Mass Gap 
From the world of pure mathematics, we journey now to the realm of quantum physics and the Yang Mills existence and mass gap problem. This problem deals with the fundamental forces that govern the universe, the forces that hold atoms together and determine the interactions of particles. The Yang Mills theory describes these forces with remarkable accuracy, but there's a catch. It predicts the existence of particles that have never been observed. These hypothetical particles are thought to have a mass gap, meaning there's a minimum amount of energy required to create them. The Yang Mills existence and mass gap problem challenges physicists to prove that this mass gap exists and to explain why these particles, if they exist, haven't been detected. It's like searching for a ghost in the quantum machine, a particle that's both there and not there, a phantom of the subatomic world. Solving this problem would be a major breakthrough in our understanding of quantum physics, potentially leading to new technologies and a deeper understanding of the universe's fundamental laws. Chapter 10. The Goldbach Conjecture and finally, we come to the Goldbach conjecture, a problem so simple yet so elusive that it's captivated mathematicians for centuries. This conjecture states that every even number greater than two can be written as the sum of two prime numbers. For example, four can be written as two plus two, ten can be written as three plus seven, and one hundred can be written as three plus ninety-seven. It seems so simple, almost obvious. Yet despite centuries of effort, no one has been able to prove that this holds true for every even number. The Goldbach conjecture is like a mathematical jigsaw puzzle where every even number is a puzzle piece, and the prime numbers are the building blocks. It asks whether we can always assemble these prime number blocks to form any even number puzzle piece. Solving this conjecture would be like finding the missing piece of the mathematical puzzle, unlocking a deeper understanding of the relationship between prime numbers and the fabric of arithmetic. Outro the end, or is it? And there you have it, the top ten simplest impossible problems in the world. These puzzles remind us that even the simplest questions can lead to the most profound mysteries. They're a testament to the boundless nature of human curiosity and the enduring power of the unknown. These problems may remain unsolved, but they continue to inspire generations of mathematicians and scientists, pushing the boundaries of human knowledge and challenging us to explore the furthest reaches of our intellectual capabilities. For, in the words of the great physicist Richard Feynman, the most exciting phrase to hear in science, the one that heralds new discoveries, is not Eureka, but that's funny. So, the next time you stumble upon a seemingly simple question that leaves you baffled, Remember these impossible problems. Embrace the mystery, for it's in the pursuit of the unknown that we truly discover the wonders of the universe. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more intriguing content.